Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode number 75, the big 7-5. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm the owner of Outdoor Legacy. And as always, I've got my co-host, Hans, from the Hans East Texas YouTube channel. What's going on tonight, Hans? Man, we've got a pretty important show coming up right now, some some breaking news that we're going to be getting into very soon. But I want to give a quick shout-out and a thank you uh, from a company that, that Jason, they sent a couple of these over for us. It's Subtac Covers. So these are suppressor covers. And uh, you can go give them a uh, – check them out on Instagram at uh, Subtac Covers. But I want to thank them because, Jason, they gave us uh, – sent a couple black ones and some, awesome. a couple American flag ones so we can – kind of let our uh, let our flag fly when yeah, we're and, hunting but and i'm excited not, to i'm excited to get mine on and, and use it here pretty soon not be reaching up there and burning my hand making sure yeah. that that thing's still on there tight when i'm shooting good well, well I, thank I you very much that subtech yeah. that's awesome yeah yeah it was it's a, and it looks like a great product and well made so uh yeah again awesome. thank you but we've well, thank got you very um, much yeah, we've got a lot to talk about today. And, well, well and, we do. Uh, well, the first thing we've got to talk about is this is episode 75, yeah, and I don't know if you know right. this, but I looked this up. And so there's different anniversaries that have <laughs> different things that you're supposed to give gifts and whatever. And 75, so like a wedding anniversary, is diamonds. And uh, obviously, I wouldn't want diamonds from you, but you could give <laughs> me a diamond back AR. And I would, I mean, especially uh, like a 12-inch you know, 6.5 Grendel would be great, but I'm, well, so I'm just waiting on my gift. I'll tell you, I, now, Diamondback is now, they're going to start making 6.5 Grendel barrels. 12 and um, a half inch? I don't think they have the, yeah, I don't think they have the pistols right now, but <sighs> Man. It, they will soon. If they're, if they're making okay. that caliber, they will have the caliber soon. But if you're watching on YouTube and you can see over my shoulder on the wall, I've got several Diamondback rifles hanging on my wall. Uh, right now, and I, as soon as they get that six five Grendel, you're going to buy me one. Is what I'll you're buy you one. You buy me one. It'll be easy. Oh, see, I'm not liking <laughs> this. I really thought for our 75th show, you would do something special for me, but I see well, how it I is. It's just you, another show. Uh, this month, also, uh, somebody on our show, one of the co-hosts, has a a, a birthday coming up, and uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. I'll be excited this month. I'll be excited yeah. to celebrate that with you in Shreveport. We're going to go yeah. out there together and celebrate. That's right. We'll we'll go and and uh, our wives are going to drag us along. And yeah, that's right. It it will be, but it's not any kind of. W once you're over forty, it's yeah. not a big milestone. Maybe not till fifty. So between uh, yeah, forty and fifty. You, I was going to say you look great for being in your mid fifties, but <laughs> <laughs> don't I'm just you? Don't, yeah, I'm ten years <laughs> younger than that. <laughs> yeah. So, but y'all, um, yeah, thank you. 75 episodes. That's an awesome, uh, milestone for us. It is, um, a year and a half. Yeah, we have not missed a week yet. And we, yeah, again, it's coming. Yeah, it's, it's coming. Com well, don't jinx this, but we want to thank all the, the listeners. I, I made a, uh, a post on Instagram earlier this week about, um, people from all over the world, every continent on the planet, uh, sending us messages and emails and thank yous. Uh, for doing the podcast, and we appreciate every single one of you for listening. Yeah, I, I want to bring something up real quick since you said that again, and and we've brought this up, and folks, you're probably tired of hearing it, but we're going to have to keep bringing it up. Uh, we get the emails. We read the emails. Uh, we get you know a lot of messages and comments, and, and we appreciate them. We appreciate the show suggestions, feedback, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, YouTube comments, whatever, but we are to the point where we're getting so many that it's hard to reply to them all. And again, we read them. Hans and I will talk about them. Uh, you know, I know we got an email uh, maybe a week ago from somebody overseas, a very long detailed email and a lot of questions. It's a really good email and the guy's got some legitimate questions, but it, it's, I, I have, I'm 20 emails behind just for, for my customers right now, trying to keep up with that sort of thing. So if you email us, we're going to read it, but it yeah. might take us a while uh, to respond to it. We may not be able to answer all your questions. Uh, you know, especially a lot of our guys overseas have a problem getting good information over there. And we understand that, but it's, and, and we'll do our best, but we we can't make any promises because the, the amount of, of email from overseas and whatever is getting pretty, pretty heavy. Yeah, it, it is. But keep those show suggestions coming also, because even though we, you may not get a reply back right away, we do, like Jason said, we'll look at them and, 
and we've gotten some good cop, uh, topics from, we have. from listeners and viewers of the show. We had another really, one this afternoon that yeah. I got that's a, a really yeah. good one. So absolutely. So the reason, uh, one of the reasons you may be checking out this show on in, on uh, not on Instagram on YouTube or <laughs> one of the podcast sharing apps, um, there is some breaking news coming from Pulsar about the Pulsar Thermion XM30, uh, the last of the the scopes that was supposed to be coming out in the series of releases of the Thermion models. Um, I'm going to let Jason talk a little bit about this because he got this information firsthand, so it is correct. Um, but there, uh, there's going to be a lot of kind of questions and scrambling after after yeah. you hear what's going on with the XM30 because I know a lot of people were excited about it coming out. It's the lowest price point of all the thermal of all the Thermions. Um, and so, Jason, why don't you just go ahead and hit him with it right up well, the head, man? I don't think this is any surprise, uh, honestly. And anybody who's who's you know read some of my comments and replies to the YouTube questions and you know emails and and I've said this publicly on some of the hunting forums uh, and Facebook, uh, the Thermion XM30 uh, Pulsar Thermal Rifle Scope as of uh, you know this week, first of October. Uh, is officially dead. It has been discontinued. It was never produced. Um, you know, I think they might have had a couple of prototypes overseas, but there was never one came to the U.S. There was it was never sold, and it's gone. And just like that, uh, never came to fruition. And as you might remember, a few weeks ago, it's actually been several weeks ago, maybe by this time, a couple months ago, on the show, uh, Pulsar had announced and told us that it was going to go to a fixed focus. It would not have. Mm -hmm a focusable objective lens. And that's something we were disappointed in. We've had a ton of phone calls, people wanting to know what it was going to look like. We're like, you know, our guess is as good as yours. And we do have some experience mm -hmm. with fixed focus scopes. But uh, so this is, this is not, you know, the news that we wanted to hear. I will say this. I want to be very clear. If you're hearing this and you're on uh, the Outdoor Legacy pre-order list for this scope, Go ahead and give us a call. I started the day that I got this news going down that list, and it's a very long list of guys. So, I mean, I looked at that list. There are guys on the list who have been there from one week after SHOT Show. So, I mean, the, well, the first week of February, uh, guys have been on our, our pre-order list for that with deposits. And, I mean, you know, they know we've, they've been listening to the show. We've stayed in touch as yeah. much as we can, letting them know, you know, we're just waiting, waiting. Well, now the news is there. So by the way, if you're on that list and you haven't talked to us, we haven't forgot about you. Um, you know, give us a call or we're going to call you when we get there going well, down the list. But I, I'll tell you, you know, you're saying about being surprised. Um, I know that you and I were both disappointed when we found out recently it was going to be a fixed focus lens. Um, and you know, I, I made some phone calls cause I had some people that that were interested in purchasing this unit and, and they wanted to stick it out. You know, they were going to yeah. stick it out and say, okay, let's, let's wait till it gets here. Let's see what it looks like. You do the test and review. But I, I will say you, you said you, you weren't surprised. I'm, I'm really surprised that, the, you know, this thing is discontinued before it really it, even here's the reason came that alive. I'm it's dead before it came alive. All right? right. Here's the reason I'm not surprised. So when we go this long and don't see an optic but th there's a lot of things that play into this for me. And I, I don't I don't have any crystal ball. I'm not trying to take credit for that. But but I told a lot of people, I gave it a 50% chance of showing up tomorrow and a 50% chance of, you know, not showing up until December or January or, you know, maybe even just being discontinued. And my reasoning is this. Pulsar said from the beginning it was going to be, for whatever reason, one of the last models, if not the last model to ship. So, okay, mm -hmm. not too surprised. But then as the... You know, XM38 rolled in, the XM50, then the XP38, XP50, and we started getting decent quantities of these XP units, which are always, you know, historically the hardest to get. And then it's like the only news we got on the XM30 was, you know, bad news, fixed focus. And then when the, again, when nothing. the list came out, yeah, when the list came out, I remember you and I discussing that the XM30 was probably going to be the most popular unit because not just because of the price point, but because it was the lowest magnification in the XM series, you know, that's what there's no, you, yeah, no question yeah. price point and that. So, so to finish my thought, what I was just basically saying is that uh, I've seen it long enough when you go this long and you're kind of waiting on one model 
you know something's up. You know that, I mean, and unless they just, you know, are saying, no, it's coming, it's coming. But there was no news, really, and I just felt like something funny's going on. And then when by the time we got to late September, this industry starts heating up in October, you know, November, December being the busiest, I was like, yeah, I'm not too surprised. Yeah. But, you know, um, what you just said, that is, it's very disappointing. Even if I'm not surprised, um, I'm very disappointed because it was the most ordered scope uh or, you know pre-ordered mm -hmm. anticipated uh, for i would say all the way up until about may or june we had more people on the xm 30 pre-order list than we did the 38 50 and the xps combined i mean it was a ridiculously mm -hmm. long list as it got drug out a lot of those guys slowly moved to other scopes, whether it was XM38 or Trails or something different. And they kind of, but, but it's still a big, long list. And yeah. uh, it's it's an issue because there's a lot of people that have been waiting on this scope. And now yeah. there's, it's gone. It's not coming. And I mean, that doesn't mean, to be clear, doesn't mean it can't come next year. Something yeah. crazy might happen. We're talking about, though, for all foreseeable future, it is discontinued. And, um, you know, you'll have to wait until next year to see if it's coming. And then this is what I always tell people when it comes to waiting. You can wait until the end of January at SHOT Show to see what comes. You know, last week was our predictions and wish list show. But even if... In January, they announced a new XM30 or something better or greater. You might be talking about it again in October mm -hmm. of 2020 because it hasn't showed up. Yeah. So you always yeah. got to remember that. So, okay. So we've got the we've got the breaking news. The XM30 is not coming. Um, it's dead in the water. It's dead before I actually got over the water in, in, the, in the case of shipping it over here. So the people that we talked about, the people that are either um, were focused on buying this when the dealers start getting it, or they already put their money down and they're on a list. Um, where do they go from here? What are the options um, that are uh, somewhat comparable to what they had their mind set on? Uh, and, and where do they go from here? Well, quite honestly, I would just suggest buying the biggest mag light you can find and duct taping <laughs> it to your barrel of your rifle and I going out there. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, you, thermal dealers never buy you a tell coyote you that. cannon. Coyote yeah. cannon. Hey, yeah. we've got those, and that dude is bright. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, where do we go from here? Suggestions. Uh, this is, I've got one more piece of bad news <laughs> since we're on oh, a roll. God. All right. Um, Pulsar also says that the uh, very popular uh, Thermion XM38, which is $3299, it's got a base magnification of four power. Um, it, it has been the best selling Thermion since the, the XM30 hasn't been available. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying that that unit is going to be in low supply. Uh, and I, I don't know that that's fair to say like they're not making many, but they're, let me say this, the, the supply is nowhere going to reach the demand for it. Mm -hmm. There were those concerns with it before, and now that you just take the most pre-ordered, least expensive optic, you know, what would essentially say the most popular, even though it didn't exist yet, and it disappears, what's the logical place? People go, well, I'll spend 500 bucks more and I'll buy the next one. Well, it's already very popular by its own right and was really going to be uh, in, in low supply no matter what. Now we've just increased it. So we've got a kind of an, a sticky issue. Uh, you know, right now, um, if you're on my XM38 pre-order or back order list, it's not a pre-order anymore. If a back order list, you know. Uh, we've been waiting. Um, they're mm -hmm. trickling in very slow. They were coming in really good for the first probably two months, but late August through September, uh, the shipments really dried up on those units, and we did not get near the amount that we had been. And uh, I talked to Pulsar at length about that last week. Should we see that change? And they said, you know, you should get a few more. That I mean that better than it has been. They're going to be shipping, but. It's going to be low supply, it, it, and it's 
you know, and we, we still have some guys waiting on that right now. And so what basically I would say, you're going to be very hard pressed to find a Thermion XM38 sitting on the shelf this fall, unless either a supply increases more than it's expected to, or B you've got a dealer that doesn't know what he's got. I mean, and that seems unlikely at this point. So I, I just don't think they're going to be hanging around everywhere. Um, so what are the alternatives? I mean, I don't know, Hans, you know, those as well as I do It's because I mean, and, and hang on before, we, before we change off the XM 38, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you it's not a good alternative. It's a great scope. Uh, it's a, it's a good scope, but you're gonna have to wait for it. Yeah. You know, so as far as alternatives, unfortunately, in that price range for what you're getting, there's just not, um, you know, if you're talking about other brands, um, you, you know, with, with FLIR, there's nothing right there in that, that same, uh, not that kind of area of the market. $2,800. Yeah. Yeah. That $2,800 that you get, you know, internal video recording, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the only thing, um, that I can think of that I think is a great choice of, of switching over to is just the, the trail models of the Pulsar trail models still very popular. I know it's, you know, they don't have one in that $2,800 price range, but you got the Pulsar trail XQ 38 at 32 99, which is still, um, you know, dealers can still kind of get their hands on them. I know outdoor legacy gear has them. Yeah. Uh, right now, the the Pulsar uh, Trail XQ fifties at thirty seven ninety nine again mm -hmm. uh, a great unit two point seven base magnification uh, the the XQ thirty eights you know two point two two point three somewhere around there base magnification so it's you know still that lower if you were going to the Thermion XM thirty because of the magnification uh, you know you still have the Trail XQ thirty eight and the Trail XQ fifty right there. Um, close to it, if you're, if you, you know, wanting that price range, you, unfortunately, you're going to be a little bit higher than that twenty eight hundred dollar price mark, but you're going to be within a um, thousand dollars of it if you choose a yeah. Trail XQ thirty eight or a Trail XQ fifty. Yeah, and if you go all the way to the XQ fifty at thirty eight hundred, I mean, then at that point, you need to consider the FLIR Thermosite PTS five thirty six, same price mm -hmm. as the XQ fifty. I mean, you need to consider it at that point. I've had a couple of people last week I talked to that asked me about the AGM uh, Python micro units. We've talked just a little bit on the show about AGM. Um, I'm not going to you know get into who all, what all they are, but uh, basically those units we had uh, some, some real interest in. We still do, but uh, we just got the brand new price list from them last week, and they've raised the prices on the Python micros. Um, that are branded uh, AGM. There's still some older PRG units floating around that that are you know less expensive, but the new units are going to be uh, three grand and thirty five hundred. No onboard video recording, no battery pack, no smartphone app. So I think they're going to be great scopes from everything uh, that we've mm -hmm. seen. The image quality is great on them, but you're going to be spending trail money and not getting any features. Yeah. So not the trail features, it doesn't, yeah. I mean, and if you're going to spend that much money, it's like 300 bucks more, you get the trail XQ 38, which is, uh, arguably one of the best selling thermal rifle scopes on the market for three years running. So it's, I mean, there's a lot of features, a lot of benefits, yeah. the Pulsar, you know, reputation and, and all that. So I, I don't know. We're not just trying to well, preach Pulsar, but we go back to, there's not yeah. a lot of options here in this I price will, range. I will say this. Uh, for AGM, um, those scopes are kind of hitting the market at a good time where there's still high demand and not a, not a lot of supply. That's right. And, uh, so there's not a lot of $3,000 options or, yeah, or there right. are options, but dealers don't have those scopes. And there's that's right. a lot of people and you and I talk to them all the time that say, send me whatever you have around this price. And they're really they just want something they you know, want something and yeah. yeah and if you're if you're one of those people then you're gonna have to make a choice i mean one thing you know on the agm units i think that's a pretty universal uh, agreement right now is that you're gonna have to buy uh, an aftermarket mount um, mm -hmm. the, the mount that comes with it i think has some issues and bobro is making a high quality quick detach mount but you're talking about over two hundred dollars 
uh, that you're going to add immediately to that purchase. So think about that. Yeah. I mean, that just immediately puts you in that, you know, 3200 yeah. to $3,700 price range. So, uh, again, I'm not saying it's not a real option. If you're interested in it, give us a call. We can talk about it. Yeah. Uh, but, but I would say that the trails is where you're going to be looking at. Um, you're going to be, you know, again, if you're talking about spending a thousand bucks more, you can look at the FLIR. Some people are going to be saying, hey, maybe I need to go down. Maybe I need to go look at the PTS 233 or the uh, Pulsar uh, Core RXQ30V, yeah. 1899, 2199. Um, you know, there's video recording on the on the FLIR. So there's just, those are some options there uh, that you might be interested in, in looking at. It's, it's going to be tough this fall, though, with this. Yeah. Again, I am not. I'm not telling somebody not just to forget about the Thermion XM38. Not at all. I think. I mean, it's an amazing scope. And even though it is four power, and Hans and I think both agree on this. And if, if you disagree, tell me. But the field of view is wide enough on it that it can be used at closer distances than something like the 536. That's the same magnification. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the field of view is, is I'm going off memory here, 20 to 24 percent wider on the I think that's right. I think it's maybe 25 percent wider on the XM38 than it is on the 536. So you yeah. can pull off some closer shots if you need to with yep. that scope. But you're just going to have to wait to get it, most likely, unless you just get lucky and yeah find one laying around. So if you are, again, if you've been had your mindset on the Thermion XM30 and that's was your number one choice and you've kind of been waiting and, and sitting back on your money. Um, really, uh, if you're willing to wait, the, uh, the Thermion XM38 is the next logical move if you're willing to wait. But, yeah. And, and one thing, Hans, we didn't even discuss here. We just jumped back to the trails, but I think it's worth mentioning is there's a lot of guys that are buying or were buying the Thermion XM30 because of the design they want that yeah. scope design for you mm -hmm. know whatever reason so yeah. you you are going to be forced at that point to do what hans just said wait on the xm38 yeah. or maybe even on upgrade uh we're talking about a lot more money but into an xp38 or an xp50 unit but again yeah. i know that's that's a lot of money yeah. we're not trying to upsell everybody here <laughs> so so if you like i said if you've got your your, your mindset on the xm30 but you're looking for alternatives give uh Give us a call. Give Jason a call. 877-350-1818. You can find all this stuff on OutdoorLegacyGear.com. Now what we want to get into right now is a couple different things. Uh, Jason also, and and again, this is, uh, the XM30 was major breaking news in our industry. There's not a lot of huge breaking developments, but we pretty much rearranged our sco show schedule uh, to be able to dedicate a show to talk about to deliver this bad news, <laughs> bad news, and a lot of people are were going to be disappointed, unfortunately. But but there are people out there that can help. Um, but there are uh, there is some other firmware news, Jason, that you heard about as well for the Axion and Thermions coming out soon. Yeah, we should be this fall seeing another firmware update from Pulsar come out for the Thermions and the Axions. If you remember. The Trails and the Helions received an update a while back that improved the image quality through the eyepiece as well as improved the video that was recorded. So the video output was better. And I've noticed that on just some of the videos that I've seen people posting online on, on Facebook and some of the social medias of like, wow, that video really looks yeah. better. And, and that yeah. was due to this firmware update. Well, Pulsar told us that we should expect some sort of an update like that this fall uh, for the Thermions. Don't have any kind of date on that, so you know I'm sure they're still working on it. But sometime this fall, we should see that, and you know I'm I'm glad to see that because uh, I think the image qualities are really good, and I think that the personally I think the recorded video out of the Thermions mm -hmm. looks really, really good. good. I think it looks good. better than the, the trails yeah. ever did. Uh, yeah. Again, the, just, I mean, the recorded video specifically. But if they can improve that anymore, I am all about it. So that's yeah. something we'll keep our, our finger on the pulse of and see what goes into this fall. So if you already own one, that's something you may be looking for. I want to talk a little bit about the firmware update that just came out uh, just, I think, last week 
for the mm-hmm. axion and the thermion. So, um, Jason and I were talking about it and, and kind of discussing this, and and I just put the firmware update on my thermion XP50. Uh, shot some video with it. You know, the, the big update was the microphones turned on. That's what everybody's been waiting on. The microphone finally got turned on. It and when you do the firmware update, you can go into the menu. It does now how now have that feature you know the function where you can switch it on and off so i went in turned the microphone on uh went out this weekend shot several videos and just sat down uh a few hours before the show before we're taping this because i was gonna uh take it off and listen to it you know because finally got sound well i uh took the videos from the scope you know tethered it with the the usb cable to my now i use a a macbook which is an apple product um and that's what I do all of my editing on, uh, all my video editing and everything. So I, I, I don't use the app. I'm one of those people that don't use the Stream Vision app. I love it. I'm glad it's there. I just don't use it for anything other than the firmware updates. So downloaded the videos from the scope directly to my computer, fired the thing up. I was excited about hearing sound, push play, and no sound. <laughs> First thing I do is I, I text Jason. I was like, hey, has anybody said anything about this? Because I'm not hearing anything on my videos. So in the microphone, uh, microphone icon was on the, on the bottom of the screen, you know, showing that it should be on. So go ahead. Yeah. Like I just want to say something. one thing. Yeah. I want to say one real quick. And by the way, I did receive several phone calls last week about this, but the, the first thing I want to say is he mentioned something. Han said the microphone icon. So if you download the new update for a Thermion or an Axion and you know, you're like, okay, nothing's happening. Well, you, you have to go into the menu yep. and look for an icon that looks like kind of a microphone, like yeah. a rounded microphone, right. kind of like one of these on YouTube that Hans and I are talking into, uh, something like that. And you've got to turn the audio on. If you don't see that icon, and I don't remember if it's on the, I think it may be on the second page, but I know it's at the top. I think it may be on mm-hmm. the second page of icons. But anyway, if you don't see that, then you don't have the right firmware or you're not updated all the way. And if you do see that, you have to turn it on. And then the only other thing I'm going to say before I give it back to you is that um, what it does appear so far, which was really not a surprise to me, uh, is that the audio does not seem to be working on iPhone Apple products if you move it like through the app, which again, mm-hmm. I don't ever do that. Hans and I do not use the app except for updating, and then I might turn on the streaming if I've got like kids or something with me. But generally, we don't do any kind of video transfer. I, I find it cumbersome and it's just, I don't know, I'd rather use a computer. Yeah. But yeah. And, and the last thing, I just said that was going to be the last, but Hans is talking about all this, moving it to a, a Mac. And he was texting me over the weekend about this, and there was some confusion. I didn't know exactly what he was talking about, or I I thought I did. Had I understood what he was saying, (laughs) I would have tried this before this show on my PC. I don't use a Mac. I use an iPhone, but I don't use a a Mac computer. I'd have tried it on my my laptop and seen if it worked on a PC. But until Mm -hmm. we got ready to record the show, we're kind of hashing it out. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So you can see how prepared we are. Uh, oh, we'll yeah. have to well, report so, back and, and see how it works on the PC. Well, I was going to say, so I downloaded it to my MacBook and there was no sound. And what I had to do was similar to what I had to do on the trail videos when I took them off uh, and put them on a computer. I had to send it through a converter app, which you can get converter apps. Uh, and basically it's a video converter where you can convert from, and this may go over a lot of people's head, dot .avi, dot .mov. You can convert it to an mp4 file or some other type of video file i had to send that thermion video that came directly off the scope through the converter app when i converted it through there then i had sound because it it saves it to the desktop so uh, i know some people are probably eyes rolling back in their head and they're like what the heck are they talking about but if uh, right now i mean if you have a macbook and like i said jason if anybody else knows anything different uh comment to this video on youtube or something if it's working on your pc but on apple you pull that video directly off your scope and want to play it you're not going to have sound unless you convert it through some type of converter app yeah and we can report back on that and see i mean i'm going to go home tonight and find out i just i didn't do it before the show 
Uh, so we'll see what it's doing on a PC, but um, it, it might be better on PC. Uh, MacBooks, I love working on a MacBook. I, I think they're great, but they are very finicky on uh, stuff coming off from separate drives, hard drives, everything like that. I mean, it, I, I don't know if it's the security that's built into the systems, but um, we, you know, we had the same issues with the trail videos. You know, they it, they didn't want to see them. Yeah, and I know that some people, you know. Um, will immediately say, well, my goodness, you know, why would Pulsar release this and it, you know, doesn't work on Macs and blah, blah, and whatever. And I get it, and I'm not sitting here trying to defend them because I don't think that they're a perfect company and they don't need me to defend them. Uh, There's a lot of things they do that I scratch my head at, but I will say that, you know, you can't make everything perfect for everybody. And Apple, of all people, are notorious for making their stuff intentionally different from everybody else's Mm -hmm. where things don't work on them. So I always find it kind of funny when somebody says, well, it ought to work on this Apple product. It's like, well, you know what? And don't get me wrong. I'm using, uh, I'm recording on an iPad. I've got an iPhone. I get it. But Apple does everything in their power to make their stuff weird and not work with everybody else's stuff. So it's kind of like whose fault is it, you know? And and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to stand up for Pulsar, but I I do a lot of, you know, video editing and stuff too. And it's everything we've done on the Mac is always different. And I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, it's two different platforms and there's a reason for it. There, you and I have, I think a lot of experience with technical stuff like this, computers and that kind of stuff. And it's like kicking a field gold when somebody keeps moving the goalpost with Apple. Uh, Cause you look at everything is being done now um, to increase security and cyber threats and stuff like that information. There's a lot of uh, hypersensitive, hypersensitivity to data uh, and security and personal information. You know, you look at um, the, uh, the when you use the app and you connect to the app it used for Apple, it only had four a uh, four digit pa- passcode. Now it's got an eight. You yeah, know, it so it, it's yeah, still, yeah. And now it's it, it's little things like that that Apple and and a lot of other companies do to I don't want to say make it intentionally more difficult, but they are trying to be They're trying more to beef secure. up security. And in yeah. reality, we don't need security between your scope and your phone. And I know we're out in yeah. left field and a lot of people are like, I don't even own a Pulsar. I don't know what you're talking about and whatever. Um, it, it is what it is. And, and, you know, I had a guy this week tell me, he said, uh, the guy called and he was, he was complaining. He was like, well, I'm looking at a Pulsar trail. He's like, but I've just heard bad things about this app and blah, blah, blah. And I just can't understand why they don't get it right. And I said, well, that's, that's true. And I said, <laughs> you could buy a FLIR. And I said, they don't have any problems with their app at all. And he goes, oh, I didn't know they have an app. And I said, oh, they don't. <laughs> I said, but it's it's flawless because they haven't even yeah, attempted to do great. it. You know, so it is what it is. No, nothing's perfect. And here's the other thing. Uh, these things, uh, you know, they're this is still a niche market. These things aren't selling to millions of people all over. Mm-hmm. So uh, it seems to take a little while longer to get the ship turned around and changes made in, in this industry. But anyway, it's it's all good. So stay tuned for um, more talk on that as we get some of this stuff sorted out and, and figured out, and and uh, we'll see where we, we go from there. Yep, that sounds well, good. Well, go good ahead. deal. Well, well, I'm sorry, what would you say? Roll on with it, brother. Roll on. Oh, sorry. I thought, you're, <laughs> I thought you had something else to say about it. Okay, I'll folks, listen. Else to say, you've I'm always got something to it. say. Yeah. All right. Well, folks, we appreciate y'all listening to the show again this week. And I know that uh, some of this, maybe all of it, was inside baseball. And you go, man, I didn't get anything out of that. But uh, we, we hope that you did. If you're interested in the Thermions, and we know you got some news there, if you've got a Pulsar product already then uh, you know you may have some some information you learn there about the uh, app and some of the firmware updates Uh, but as always we appreciate you tuning in every week like we said 75 episodes all your support your emails your comments the likes and shares they mean a lot to us and we just appreciate y'all coming back every week now listen if you want to find more of hans's stuff if you want to see his uh videos again he has some of the best review videos 
that anybody has no. on the internet, and I will argue that I think they are the best. And uh, you know, if you want to go check those out yourself, you can go over to YouTube, and it's Hans E T X on YouTube, and you can see all of his stuff. He's also got tons of uh, hog hunting and coyote hunting videos on there from all these scopes that we talk about. So go check that out, and you can also find him on Instagram as well. Before they shut me down, <laughs> before Instagram <laughs> shuts me down. <laughs> uh, also, uh, go check out Jason. He also has a, uh, a YouTube page. It's Outdoor Legacy Gear. That he needs also, to update. <laughs> yeah, he needs to update. He's got a Facebook. He's got an Instagram. Uh, but thank you all for checking out the show. Uh, as always, uh, you know you can find this stuff on YouTube. Find it on all the podcast sharing apps. Uh, and please go uh, and like all of our stuff and all of our pages. Give us a good review on on. Uh, on the iTunes app or whatever that is. My wife says that's a kind of a big deal. So please go do that. <laughs> but uh, y'all take care. Thank you for joining us for episode 75 of the late night vision show. We're going to be back to our, our regular scheduled program for episode 76. I'm sure we'll get back into some reviews and some uh, comparisons of, of some different scopes, but we will see y'all next week. Y'all take care. 